Hello and welcome to another OESA Economic Brief for the fourth quarter of 2021. Uh, Mike Jackson, Executive Director of Strategy and Research at OESA. Uh, very happy to have you with, with us here. Uh, so let's just jump right in. We'll, we'll talk quickly about the global context and we'll come back to the, uh, the U.S. market outlook. Here you've got uh, an image of uh, a number of uh, Toyota's um, offerings and their growing EV portfolio concept here. Here we are in mid-December and pretty remarkable uh, time in the industry. Uh, Toyota announced a $70 billion investment uh, plan for its uh, EV strategy here going forward. And so really just kind of indicates the, the scope and scale of, of the kind of change that we're seeing here. So let's just jump right into the economy. If we look at the global uh, economy here, Obviously, last year recession and a pretty deep one at that. And so on a global basis, 3.1% decline uh, in the U.S., uh, down 3.4%. Now, across the rest of North America, much deeper, 8.3% uh, decline in Mexico, 5.3% in Canada last year. But what that contributed to then was this bounce back here in, in 2021. And so a 5.8% growth on a global basis and pretty consistent uh, performance there. Uh, within uh, the, the the region here, kind of in that range, uh, and for a couple of different reasons, right? Obviously, very strong government spending uh, to to help uh, with regard to stimulus there, uh, helping uh, displaced workers and, and the rest. Uh, but at the same time, then uh, we also had consumers that uh, weren't in a position to spend uh, in the pandemic, and so as a result, you know, savings rates improved, and so there's. This kind of dual path here in terms of um, you know, helping to support those uh, the higher level of, of economic activity here. That said, you know we see some moderation here going forward, uh, and that's true in region and, and for, on a global basis as well. So let's uh, just jump ahead here to what it means for light vehicle demand. When we look at the global light vehicle demand environment, pretty surprising from the standpoint that this was supposed to be a year of recovery, and yet the economy uh, constrained this year as a result of what began as the semiconductor shortages and yet contributed to uh, and, and cascaded into uh, a much broader range of supply chain disruptions. And so you know, that had a, a significant constraining effect on the economy, but then also in terms of supply. And so we see that uh, light vehicle sales for 2021 remain positive, um, up 3% here from year ago, uh, just under that 80 million unit threshold, but really just a couple of pockets of, of reasonable, meaningful growth in terms of North America and the rest of Asia, the rest of the world uh, largely flat, particularly in terms of uh, unit volume. Uh, if we look at the U.S. market, uh, this is kind of another, you know, interesting representation of, of where we are. The BMW XM, um, 750 horsepower, twin turbo, V8, uh, plug-in hybrid uh, coming to market here at, at the very end of next, if not uh, early 2023. And so, a pretty striking uh, vehicle, and, and again, once again, kind of underscoring the the kind of transition and the the, the pace of change that we're in. Uh, looking at uh, uh, this this blend of performance and uh, electrification here going forward. If we look at the economy in the U.S., uh, we talked about the U.S. already uh, to some degree. Um, we see moderation here going forward, certainly. Um, but I want to highlight the unemployment rate here on the right. And so what we see here is a significant improvement on the unemployment rate. And it's clear it's continued. Uh, this is a little bit different source. This is uh, from the quarterly Wall Street Journal survey of uh, leading economists, about 70 economists here uh, across uh, various sectors. And so the point here is that um, the October unemployment rate at 4.6% at declined still further to 4.2%. And yet we do know that there are still millions of, of job vacancies. And so that number actually rose from 10.5 million to 11.48 million here uh, in the, the latest reading. And so that uh, simply means that there are just a, a ton of jobs. We know it's incredibly challenging to find work or workers right now. And so uh, that, that represents a significant headwind that, that continues to constrain the overall economy. So when we look at job openings, um, jobs open per 100 employed. Um, this is the three month average here, but we see that that spike here is up uh, just under that seven, seven per 100. Uh, the interesting part here is that that is true for uh, effectively the same level there for total non-farm and for manufacturing. Uh, so consistent there, but then we look to the right and we see that in terms of quits, uh, job quits per 100 employed. Uh, we look at that three month average, uh, much, uh, you know, certainly at a historic high, and so that is a, a really difficult uh, you know, place for us to be. And yet I would say that manufacturing is uh, a bit lower than uh, the, the total non-farm uh, threshold there uh, at 2.8 uh, on a 
2.8 jobs uh, quit per 100 employed. And so, um, you know, it still it remains a, a very challenging environment at this point. If we look at the S&P 500, typically this is a pretty strong barometer in terms of, of where things are. And, and uh, here, just as of very late, we just had some, you know, kind of a, a significant shift here at the Fed relative to uh, uh, policy. And so, you know, recognizing that inflation is real, that it's uh, significant and that uh, steps need to be taken. So, you know, advancing by one quarter, uh, the, the the taper, uh, and so rather than ending the uh, the, the asset taper uh, purchases there in from June, pulling that ahead to March, and so uh, effectively accelerating the uh, the pace of, of rate increases there on the federal funds rate. So looking at uh, that here, looking at signaling three rate rises here for next year, so pretty significant impact, um, and, and so what that means, but but the, the market still remains very strong, and so we're at very near historic highs. Uh, on the flip side, though, if we look at to the right side, we look at consumer sentiment. Consumer sentiment uh, continues to trend lower, and then for the reason there has everything to do with inflation. We know that inflation um, CPI is at a 40-year high, uh, coming in at 6.8 percent here in the November timeframe. So, um, represents a, a significant uh, headwind in terms of consumer sentiment, knowing that. Um, Yes, uh, there, there are shortages relative to goods available, but then prices are, are significantly higher for a number of them as well. And so that dragging down sentiment there. If we look at then what that means for the automotive sector, clearly when we look at um, you know, inputs, a, a broad basket of inputs for automotive manufacturing, uh, we historically have been kind of in that 2.6% threshold uh, on a compound annual basis for uh, in the recent history there. Uh, for uh, you know, a, a range of, of commodity inputs. And so what we've seen though, that has jumped dramatically. And so we're looking at you know, 3.5 3 times that rate with a 9% you know, compound annual growth rate here uh, more recently. And that, that includes, that excludes uh, a range of, of labor and import, uh, a broad range of other costs. And so we know that uh, in terms of uh, logistics, uh, freight is, is significantly higher. And, and in many cases, uh, we're, we're not looking at a 9%, you know, Kager. We're looking at um, two, three, four X uh, in terms of, of significantly higher costs. And so that's something that um, you know, suppliers uh, certainly need to contend with. Uh, the industry is, is working very hard to, to, to um, get control of, of these uh, higher costs. And so if we look here, just to, to leave you with this, uh, the, the North American production outlook uh, here from LMC Automotive, um, you, you see here that um, you know, there's, uh, a positive direction here in terms of where the outlook is, is headed. So from that 13 million unit threshold to uh, 2 million units of additional volume here, 15 million units uh, at one time was a, a relatively weak market. And yet right now it's uh, certainly a welcome sign uh, in terms of where the North American production environment is headed. Uh, significant improvement, uh, obviously back end loaded. And so that represents a, a meaningful opportunity uh, for the industry, for the supply base. Uh, and yet, uh, you know, clearly it's going to represent some additional challenges here to make sure that uh, a number of those bottlenecks and uh, some of those you know, pressures there within the supply base uh, through those supply chains uh, are, are navigating. We're able to navigate those. So uh, with that, I certainly appreciate the time. If I can ever be a resource, please don't hesitate. Look forward to seeing you uh, hopefully in person here uh, in the near near future and uh, wish you all the best. Uh, happy holidays and uh, we'll, happy new year. We'll see you in 2022. Take care.